Greetings and salutations, this is Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado. Another episode of Not Only Screw Guy. This one is interesting. They were looking at Storm D this today. And I looked at it in my mainstream. I have a confession to make before I get started, though. I really botched up the live stream today. Basically, I forgot to unmute myself. I also forgot to switch the scene. From the intro into the Zoom meeting. That Ben Fats Fitz, Fitzpatrick on on with me today and uh, apologize to him and everybody for mess screwing that up. Yeah, I've done that more than one time, so at any rate, uh, I put that in private mode, stored away since it was totally useless, nobody wanna watch screen with the intro screen on for the whole time not see what we're talking about even if they could hear us it's really getting hear us very good over there so so anyway we're gonna look at storm os d d stands for debbie in there and the regular storm os is a arch based system with the goal of making the arch installation easier to do by using calamar installer also made certain toolbox things. They have a toolbox, yep. And uh, so we'll take a look at all that stuff when we get in there. For now, we're going to get started on, on, let's look at the website first. Okay, here we are. Welcome to Storm OS, says making Arch Links easy. That's basically what it does, because Debian is not as hard as Arch install. However, Debian is also hard to install in some way, other ways. Yeah, this makes it easy it's for people coming from Windows or Apple. You can install Arch, which is not as stable as, as Arch. Is Arch. Arch is a little unstable in certain situations. So that's why he, went, he said he went to Debian, because Debian also has a more history of being stabler. stabler. So yeah, so he wanted to look at how to make Debian. I, he's planned on fixing this, but right now there's no nothing pointing you to Debian on the main page. We're back to have downloads, and you have a free option, basic option, premium option. Basic costs ten dollars, and the premium is twenty dollars. Well, what is uh, the difference is you the level of support you get. And the Bay free option, you get some support, but the amount is driven to get you support in a timely basis, that kind of thing. If you really want support, you pay $10, $20, and you get those support levels it has here. Anyway, you in any one of these things here, we're going down here, and you see this Debian download at the bottom. Oh, there's Debian. Yeah, so it's Arch, Arch, yeah, your Arch XFC and your Arch KD Storm OS. But the mirror downloads there. The Debian download is still set here now. This is also uses Google Docs to download it with. Click on this. And it takes you here. Click on download and it takes you to Google Docs. Is download at yeah so do you have that available you know it's not the best situation but he says they plan on in the future fixing all this but put links on the front page for damn debian versions stuff like that he tells me they're working on the sourceforge page for the urls download straight from sourceforge I currently do the Arch version, but they don't have it all fixed up yet, so they're working on it. One of the many things they're working on there is this labor love that he has, Ben Fitzpatrick, and also another guy with the name Ricky. On his first name or last name, I don't remember his full name. Sorry about that. There's two main devs are working on it, Ben and Ricky. They have some other contributors, but they're kind of... Uh, 
Not, not there. Bulk was forced him by Ben and Ricky, I think. So, anyway, with all I said, you click down on the link and it takes you to download. Alright, so you can flash it to any uh, USB stick using Etcher or Rupus. Or you, like me, I have it on Ventoy stick. But that's a little more complicated to tell you how to do that. Now we'll go look at the screen itself. Alrighty. So here we are on the uh, live version. I have to warn you, I think maybe this uh, laptop won't show everything. So I may cut out earlier or later in the install process. Most people have seen the Calamar Star, which is basically all it is. Simple Calamar Star, no, no frills, no nothing fancy on it, just a Calamar Star. I think the plan is eventually they're going to put... Uh, some programs you can have it installed in the process. Now, one thing you have to remember to do is to set your your uh, Wi-Fi up. That's so uh, you can download anything you download and the install process happens. Yeah, it's just a feature, not a, not a bug. You have to have your Wi-Fi going in order for it to download things, obviously. Anyway, we have install Storm D here. This is where the installer goes, the Calmar Star. Then you kick it in. And... Next, uh, time zone. I always have set this in Denver and here you have your uh, what language you're using and what uh, locale you're using. Numbers and date type thing. So there's your keyboard. You can use that to make sure you're at the right keyboard. Yeah, I always know that's right. This is your choices on your partitioning for your hard drive. Now, if you have some another system on your hard drive you want to keep or something, you always do install alongside of. Sure you partition, make room for, for this OS. Or... You can replace partition with this uh, this partition. Probably going to put there Debian. And there you erase this and just have it start all over. That's going to erase everything on there. That's going to make sure everything critical on there you don't, want to you don't want to lose. And then you have the option to manually partition. I'm going to just choose erase disk. Probably because this system has a... Uh, Separate drive. This is, has a NVMe drive, and I also have other drives on here. I got a SDA, which is where I store my home directory. Yeah, of course, our Ventoy stick, which is 1.8 terabytes. No, 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 no. That's my external drive. It's also connected to the computer. Instead of a Ventoy stick, it knows you don't want to install a Ventoy stick. So, that'd be weird. So anyway, you also have the option to encrypt your system right here if you want to. Which is case where I need to do that. This one I don't usually, so I'm going to leave it as just this. So that's next. Here I am my name. And my username and Aspire 5 
password is no. No, I'm not going to tell you what password is. And you next. Now you have your, it tells you everything, the summary here, basically everything that's going to happen on you, what you plan to told it to do in your computer to install system. So we have all that installation, so what it's going to do, it's going to install system right, right has it. So you just hit install button, when you hit install button, it installs. So no, 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 no extra button to say yes, I want to install, sure, do it. We install as soon as you want to install a sucker, so it'll do it. So, and away it goes. Now, this takes about four or five minutes. So, we'll wait and come back after after install's done. Okay, we're back. We're done. Took about four and a half minutes to install that. Not bad. Uh, my uh, Acer Aspire. Which I believe has four cores of a AMD processor, Ryzen three. So not bad, pretty stiff. So we'll go ahead and start up, reboot now, and we'll boot into a new system. And also we'll say please remove the live and medium close the tray if any and press enter to continue. So I'll take my live medium out. Press enter. And we got the Acer screen, we got Debian screen, you can't see it, but there's Debian screen up there now. Booty into the system. Pray, 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 pray. And you can see the display manager firing up, which is light DM according to what he said. So there you are. So as you notice, we have a blue background on here. No, no, no background to speak up. But uh, it's easy to get this to work right. It's a little glitch in the XFC settings. And uh, he's working on it to, to install, to have it on the next ISO out. Stop here, and I'm going to come back after I finish setting up my home directory correctly on this machine. Too complicated to show you now. I don't want to take your time away. So already we're not really what we're here to do. So we're gonna look at a uh, storm OS more in depth in a minute. All right, we're back and we have the whole thing installed. Have it correctly installed for the home directory is my current home directory. On the other disk now. Took a while to figure out how to get all the same settings what we had here, but I got it done and got her done and she's ready to roll. Yeah, we'll do updates in a minute, but first we're going to get this uh, backgrounds rolling right correctly. And if we right click on your desktop settings, then we'll go here. You see there's nothing there and there's also no folder selected either. <clears throat> got a select folder here, you go to backgrounds. And takes a minute for it to pop in, but it'll pop in here. Wallpaper for space one, and select that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the background so that it'll it'll populate around when as we go on. And we're gonna change it every three minutes. That'll work. You know, random order too. That way you see all the backgrounds as they, as they progress, it'll pop over everyone with the room and you get to see a good selection of the backgrounds. There's so many of them take too long to show them all to you right away, but that'll give you a good overview of them, I think. So 
And should we go on? You'll see it pop over. So, background's going. Let's do an update. Yay! <laughs> you know how to do an update? It's got a special tool for that in the, in the, in the tool thing. But you can access either by this down here, right to there. You can access up here. Or you can access the, the favorites and menu, whichever one you want. There's system details right there. Alright. Before we do that though, let's let's go in and take out Colmar's installer. He said not the full Colmar's installer wasn't fully installed yet. In this version of it, they're working on it. One of the other things they're working on. We're gonna lot of things apparently. Little picky things here there. Just clean up stuff basically. That they didn't get installed. I mean, this is their uh, system D utilities program and they've got all these nice little little uh, system updates here that's what we'll click on in a minute also here's some most people being installed if you have an immediate driver here's how you install it once you get over here you just go to this tool system here and it'll install it you'll notice a laptop section that it has here memory readers and all sorts of stuff here. Yeah, a lot of stunning, a lot, a lot, a lot, a whole lot of stunning. You won't see any duplicates here. But a whole lot of stunning background wallpapers, slash wallpapers in this distro. And uh, sometimes some of them are made by a specific person. Matthew Moore, I think is his name. And there's just some really excellent, uh, cool, high popping type wallpapers in here. Before we do this part, I want to uh, also probably exit this stuff by going down here. Going down to here, applications. Going to applications, you know what directory one, you can go through there. I think it's on system, I remember, right? I'm looking for the, uh, the install system. Install system, there it is. It's saying it's not gotten rid of it. Shouldn't be. Usually, Calmar's installer is sit there. It'll once you install it, it'll erase it. The distro will. Well, he still has to do that part, so we gotta clean it up. Anyway, install system. So here's how you uninstall it. He has four updates, so we don't have to update any bunch of stuff. Needs we're gonna delete out anyway, right? So you do sudo. Apt remove calamaris. It's a spell it. Find out, won't we? And so, uh, so and this still is not right. There I go. Anyway, yeah, it's not in spell it right apparently. Calamaris. They am missing an A there. Yep, there it is. So we say, yeah, we're going to remove that. That will remove the application itself. Now you want to remove the dependencies by going sudo apt auto remove and say yep we want to erase all the dependencies as well so now that'll have to be updated when you do update yay <laughs> that's cool isn't it so now we'll like out of that, we'll go down here to the complaint. This is a plank that's used here. System tool. We'll go up here to system updates. And away she blows. Yep. Stars puppies. 
pretty quick install on this. Meanwhile, you can kind of see what's going on in the background with the wallpaper. And now uh, a uh, waterish background. Nice looking. This, they got a lot of nature ones, good nature ones in here, actually. It's updating the Linux kernel from dash 17 to dash 18. 5.10 dash 18 on the end. So yeah, it's pretty nice install. And it's pretty fast and easy. If you don't have to switch over to the other just home directory, it's pretty fast and easy at least. You want to retain the look and feel of the of a. <laughs> okay, so all those possible missing warnings. Yeah. Uh -huh. Line boot. Okay, so it's done. Yeah, I don't have anything for you to stop and look at it. Just zips out on you. Let me go. Oh yeah, reboot. The cool thing about 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 XFC is you're long on a blank desktop in F4. Bring up your logout. Restart functions. And it will restart for us. And that's going on 510-18 kernel. He is looking at getting some testing kernels, more advanced kernels for people who need them. Into there. He hasn't done it yet, still working on that too. He's got a lot to work on actually. <laughs> Some little tidbit, uh, little picky things, I guess you gotta get all fixed up in there. So, this is uh, the maintenance update support section. Maybe the game utility script section. To have game related utilities, install Steam, install Lutris Launcher, install Wine Staging Launcher. System Tools Utilities, Saw Gnome Calculator, Saw Flame Sound, Saw KQ Bit Torrent, Saw Thunderbird, and Saw Only Office, LibreOffice, Perm Launchers. That's interesting. And you got cut printers, so if you want to, if you have a printer you want to use, you can enable cut printers, you can install your cut printer's web interface, and obsolescent drivers and HP drivers are installed. You know, sitting over here. This is about us and donation merchandise. About them. Us. You know what they mean. And, uh, and this your watch, merchandise store, GoFundMe, Patreon page, Stormfish OSI. And there's a reserve. And yeah, last but not least, you have a universe over here. Which allows you to visit the Debian website or the Debian Wiki 1 and 2. So you can learn stuff. How to move software, update utility program, system resources by top, and system info by LSHW. Soon it brings up the GNOME App Store. So it takes one for the GNOME App Store to populate and all that kind of stuff. Also, this has flat packs enabled out of the box. And uh, you can install flat packs either through the command line. You know how to do that, but it's pretty easy. But where you install it through the GUI app store. You don't seem to be doing anything at all right now. So let's exit this. There's an old Debian symbol. I like the alien one actually. Uh, let's see. I think that app store out of here works best. Let's go shopping, it says. So, yeah, Feldman's all not 
Alright. A little bugs and glitches here and there, but it works. Uh, that's child chat. Yeah, so if you want to look in the uh, Steam, you can saw it through here if it doesn't work in anyone. Let's see what, what we want here Steam. Uh, Libre. Whoa. Okay. And last time I installed it through the command line, and someone saw it through the GUI. See how it works. You notice in here that it just pulls it from flathub.com. So it's installing Gleeberry Wolf, which is not an easy install actually, so I have about the best way I found out to install that. My browser of choice. I had to use Google Chrome lately because on the, on my book uploads because it wouldn't upload through Gleeberry Wolf. I don't know why, I just wouldn't do it. I doesn't like it. Or something like that. It's almost done. Usually flat packs take a little longer to install than your standard um thing, but yeah. Over here we'll also look at your software. How to set up for non free and contributors packages to go on too. It has an easy GUI application if you don't want to do mess with a terminal. Pretty much don't have to with this distro. I mean, on rare occasion when you really need to fix something internally or something, you may do that. Okay, there it is, launch. Launch this puppy. But generally, you won't have to, uh, there's Libra Wolf. Da, 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 da. I picked up my Libra Wolf settings in there. Which I have YouTube set to automatically show up on it. And it pops up your dark rear themes automatically that I had. That's a nice thing about about uh, when you set it. Your use your hard drive, one whole hard drive for your home directory, and you switch over to that. Sometimes it's pain in the rear because you got to make sure your configurations don't change when you do it. But it's nice when it pops in and you get your. Uh, you see my not letting screw guy turn logged in and do anything. First time I ever opened this up on the air. And it's all logged in and everything. And so it's got all their Steve's Linux coffee to go section. He's got 16 views. Y'all need to go out there and help him out. Do it more. So yeah. You got that now. One thing that doesn't do is it doesn't. I don't think it does your. Nope, you gotta go and put your keyboard entries in. We're gonna show you that here in a minute. So, one of the things you need to. Now, this makes it pretty easy to install your. Fix up your. I'll show you what I mean. Software repositories. Here you are. Downloadable, so you have Debian software, other software updates, authentication, developers options, you got all these options, you explore most of them. What I want to show you here was that you want to, if you want to get your non-freeing contributor sources clicking on this, as well as uh, your main, which is default. Here, I'm going to show you something real quick. Mm. Okay, and the sources list and sources list dot d. So, yeah. So we'll show you what this is. There's the uh, repos Debian repositories for it. 
No, it's just all main. That's all it is. Now when you also when you look at the source of the list. And this. Yeah, Volian Archive Scar and Stable dot list, which is pretty much what it shows in there. It's got a repository for that. You want to see it, huh? You don't want to take my word for it. Okay, I'll I'll show you. <laughs> Cat. Uh. Enter Debian, Debian uh, binary packages as well as source code packages. Let me pull from. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here. We're going to click on this. Last for your passwords. It's your changing system information. And then we're going to click on non free too. So yeah, so you got your DFSG compatible software with non-free dependencies can trib as well as your non-DSFG compatible software non-free well as source codes and efficiently supported main. So close and reload it says it's got to re redo the Update on it, but essentially what it's doing. Now, if we look at this, so you see it's got main, it's got trip and I'm free on it. It's exactly what you want to have. If you were doing it manually, that's what you do. You'd have this file as on there. But it does it for you pretty quick and easy without having to use a terminal in it. Excellente. Okay. All right now, yeah, another stunning nature shot. Also has a funny one when it pops up this Lalian from a. a Everyone was it, from Toy Story or something like that. I think it was from Toy Story. Maybe it's Lalian. You go ooh. Debian things up in the sky. Looks funny. I think it's old Jesse, Debian Jesse uh, wallpaper. So I see a lot of them there. I see a lot of other wallpapers. you be interested in, I'm sure. So let's see what else we got on here. I just want to show you how to do keyboard. So I need to show you this in the process too. Anyway, if you notice, if you hit your window key on this particular disk or nothing happens your super key meta key whatever you want to call it yeah nothing happens that's because there's no tag on it for it to activate but I'll show you how to install that pretty easy yourself what you gotta do is you appear the menu and type in key and you should get keyboard click that you got your application shortcuts. Now, you notice that super R will bring up the XFC app binder dash C, I mean compact basically. And uh, also, super R will bring up the Thunar. The reason you have it in there like that. Maybe one of the reasons you decided not to do enter it was because to do that would cause us to have a problem. The problem is, is that it gets interferes like by anyone else. See, yeah, I think uh, yeah, you have to go to Windows tweaks or Window Manager. Hmm. 
the new manager and see what I need to do. Because some mechanical keyboards and stuff have trouble. You have to use too many fingers and hands and stuff to activate the uh, close window function. Because any time you deal with a function key, nowadays they have it combined with other functions on there. And sometimes you have to hit the function button in addition to all of them there. And sometimes it's hard to do either with one hand or two hands or three hands even. But anyway, so what I do is I switch this over. Click edit, press key, and I hit super key, super Q on it. So this is a little more technical. Not everybody's going to need, need this knowledge. Not everybody's going to use this knowledge, basically. But for those who do, it's important to know. So the only problem that you have in XFCE, usually what happens is you have a setting here called XFCE 4 pop up dash whisker menu which is using the whisker menu here that's why it doesn't pop up because there's no whisker menu entry in here but anyway and usually it's just set to what left window key what happens when you do that is that when you press down on it, it interferes with all the other window key super meta combinations you have so sometimes it e will work sometimes super q will work at all sometimes it'll work but it'll It'll also pop up the menu time, so you have to escape every time if you want to get that out of the way. So, what I do is, I go down here, I click Add. On this, you'd have to add it in because it's not in here at all. So, you know, otherwise you can edit it, otherwise, if you find it in there. And change it, this here. Anyway, you want to do xfce 4 dash pop up whisker menu just like that and then we're going to make this super D on there right there is where it's at we may enable the Super D because we want to have a unique key binding, and that's one of the key bindings for a lot of menus and window managers. So I use that for this purpose anyway. So once we get that installed, we can then go to here, and you have to install Escape on here. And so we want a sudo apt install now you could probably do this to the software center too you install it through here i think escape is what you want to install though xcap escape and it's not a very long big program but probably easier to install through here than through there so now you got escape installed and you basically want to go escape and dash E, open quotation mark. And I don't think it matters whether you single or double on this, but you see the super. Underline L equals super. Underline L. Then you put the, uh, I don't know exactly what you call it, the vertical bar in there for better of a word. The one thing you have to remember then close quotation mark. And the quotation mark, you don't want any uh, spaces. It's all one glob. But if you put space in there, it doesn't work. So then you get that now with that Windows key on there. Pops up in the window like that. Just a window key. Basically, what it does is sign Super L, which is the Super Key or Meta Key or Windows Key, as some people call it, to equal Super LD, which is why I activate the menu there. So, yeah, and now what you want to do, once you know that works, you want to copy this whole thing with 
Control Shift C. Okay, then you want to go up here to. So I may already have it in here. I don't know. Since it pulls it for my my stuff, maybe. In session startup. And oh, now you want to get out here to application on the start tab. And here you have it. Now I think maybe it might already be in here. Maybe not. And add it in then. So you put it here. And I call this uh, uh, escape menu. Now you want to paste this in by just hitting control V. Paste that command you copied over there and it's on login. Yeah, that's correct. And then you go to okay. Now the next time you reboot. To still work okay. so that's pretty cool and you see I can still go control med E but it doesn't pop the menu over there or nothing doesn't prevent this from opening I hit control I mean a meta Q close the window just like I said said to do close this window close that window now, if you have an application you particularly like, choose a whole bunch. It's good to also set keys for it. Uh, Windows keys, so like a, I like the Kitty, for instance. So let's go in here and install Kitty real quick. I already have kitty and config that I like in there. Moved it over there, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, so. So, close that out. Now we're going to add a kitty to our thing here. Kitty is kitty. There with a K. <laughs> kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. And you go OK. And then you press the key. I like super return for that. So, yeah, so there. That's kitty right there. Super return. So you add any number of programs if you like to use them frequently. You want to key bindings for them, like say, your writer like I am, you always open up a LibreOffice writer a lot. You can do that you can, and get the command for that. And commands for those are a little bit different. So, you know, the easiest way to find out what a command is actually easier. Especially it's different, weird when you run a flat pack app. They have a special thing for that. So let's test this out here. Yep, it does it just like I do on mine. It's got a full screen, it's got a cobalt blue background, and it's got what you see up there. And uh, that's what I like to use that kitty. I'm kind of making this all more, more productive for myself. I use the terminal quite a bit myself, so I'll have to, I need to have a key binding for it for me. So. Dunar. That's what you got the hammer down here for. Hammer icon. Dunar file manager. First look at that. What's that? Looks like a sign or something. But it's actually uh, Thor's hammer type thing. And you go here. Libri. Cool. Then you pop some. 
and again the favorites had the panel and this time uh, favorites is the ones that appear on the menu here and the desktop had the panel let's add it to desktop for temporarily Let me add another one. Oh, I gotta show you that. Uh, I'm gonna show you the key board. Application shortcut like before. Now, web browsers, they have two of them down here. Yeah, www. When activated by homepage or something like that. So, how do you add in this one? Well, let's say you want to get your default web browser. You want to assign it to. Super B, like I tend to do. You go in here to edit. You copy. I press in Control C, so everything is marked up here in this command line will be copied. Then you cancel it out, so you don't have to reassign anything to it. Then you go over to Add, paste that in that command. Launches web browser. It's an easy way to get that in there without having to type the whole thing in. Get OK and then it asks for a key. So you can go Super B. And there it is. Right to there. Now, what you want to do? And you want to bring up a default application, what you want there. So you click that. Internet is Debian service from Sensible Browser's default on this puppy. Not exactly my choice browser. But anyway, we got other. And here you this is where you got to. Okay, I'll show you what you have to do here because this is a little complicated. Since it's a flat pack, you can't just put in Libre and we'll open it run. It won't do that. So that's XFC's version. Storm D, Storm D. Pretty nice distro, actually. So you got all these fun things on it. You got all the background. You got tools to make it easy for you to... New users, especially coming from Windows and Apple, to change... Oh. You gotta see this. I love this one. Sorry. Da 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 da. It's the old uh, Discovery Shuttle launch. That was pretty cool. Anyway, I yeah, so you got all those things. But I didn't use it. I'm using it right now on my new my. My new uh, distro on my computer. And I'll be sending him some new live just donation. Donate some, some new life for that. Thanks, Ben, for making this and for all the work you put into it. I know it's a lot of work for distros like this. One moment, we're going to go back real quick. See you at a launcher. I'll see what I did. This is a launcher on here. Launches LibreWolf. So you go here. You go here, edit launcher, second one. And this is the command right here to run it. See the big things that I have on the end there? I want to take those off anyway. So control C. And cancel. Then you want to go back up to your uh, default applications. So your flat pad, other, Then over that. Oh, come on. 
copy it. Uh, and do it to me in. Here we go. I'm going to remove all the stuff here. Just hit it where it says community. Like, okay. Now it should bring me this up. I hit Super B. Ta da! And that's how you can do it on here without using Menu Editor. It's the same command by editing your desktop launcher. So I, I would create a desktop entry for it on there. Then I would add just edit launcher on there like I showed you how to do. Copy the command out of there and bada bing bada boom you have it. Cool isn't it? Yeah so now I have my my I have everything I want on it. Yep, yep, yep. So that's nice background too isn't it? So with backgrounds flashing by we'll say I do to you. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll be back for another episode later on. Or live, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know, I might just go full time on this again. Do an upload videos because I'm having some issues with live. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, we'll try again next week and we'll have it have it out. Thank you for watching. And may Linus first be with you. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.